Hey everybody, uh, tonight's pour is uh, not going to be a Hot Wheels themed, it's not going to be a car themed, it's actually going to be something a little bit different. It's going to be themed, uh, but we're going to go with uh, tractor themed because um, I think I was at a show, uh, I was at the show in Muncie and somebody said something about tractors and I did had thought about it, but I wasn't too sure about it, but um, I did realize that tractor and toy tractors are big. I mean, I remember uh, when I first started doing some uh, craft fairs, one of them I did was at a, at a school and it was actually a tractor toy fair that had been going on for years. They'd had it every year. And this, the year I did it was the first year that they allowed other vendors other than tractor toy or toy tractor related items. Um, and Another thing is I live in uh, central Indiana and I grew up in Kansas and that's farm country. I've lived almost my entire life uh, in farm area. I would say probably my whole life. And I'm uh, 57, so that's been a long time. So I'm used to tractors. I, I was driving a tractor before I drove a car, uh, helping out with some farmers and stuff. So. I'm not gonna say it's in my blood. It wasn't something that I uh, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I had fun driving a tractor for a while. Then after a while, it's the the newness of driving a tractor wears off, and then it's just work. But uh, my dad was a our, my dad was a farmer. Our, our house is actually on um, farmland that has been in my family for generations, and. Uh, my dad was just talking the other day with us about um, when he was a kid and, and him uh, the things he had to do. And uh, as, as early as third grade, he was driving a tractor uh, on the farm. His dad made him drive it and stuff. And, and he, he really, even though he was never a farmer, um, farming was in his blood. He loved going out and, uh, and working the fields and stuff. He'd, uh, he was a pastor at a church and he was actually um, he would go and kind of for therapy for himself, just to, you know, relax and, you know, he'd, he'd be, had time to think and, you know, whatever. And, uh, so he would volunteer with some of the people from his church on their farm and drive a tractor or combine for him. And, uh, so he's always done that. The guy that farm, that actually farms the fields that are around our house, uh, my dad uh, he hasn't in a number of years, but he used to go out and um, sit in the cab with him while he was uh, plowing the fields or whatever. So that's what I decided to do. I went to a tractor supply store. I don't know if you have them in your area, but we have them out here. And, and because I, it's hard to find toy tractors in Walmart stuff that are small enough, but not, I don't want them too big. Uh, so I found... I figured Tractor Supply, I knew they had toys there. Uh, they have a lot of animals, which now I've started thinking about, you know, horses, a lot of horse lovers out there, maybe doing some couple horses running, make it look like a kind of a beach type thing where they're running through the water on the beach. You know, who knows? The wheels are always turning. So this is the tractor. It's a John Deere tractor. John Deere's are pretty popular. Um, the lady that was talking to me at the show about tractors um, said inter, said international are really hot right now. Um, I couldn't find international. I think I got a case, uh, another one that's a case and, uh, just this John Deere one just to try out. So my initial thought was to do kind of a brown background and have green going out like, you know, because the dirt's brown, most of it. And, uh, you know, you got green coming out of growth, but uh, I've kind of changed my mind on that one. Uh, and I thought maybe green and yellow because of the John Deere, is that's, that's our colors. But I've decided to go with green background and yellow uh, just streaming out. It doesn't have to actually be look like, like a field or dirt or anything. Uh, so, but I think a nice green and then some yellow, maybe a little white in it. Uh, flowing out behind it as the tractor goes. So that's that's what we're going to do tonight. So all I got to do is mix my paints and then we'll get ready. 
All right, I got it uh, mixed. The paint's mixed. I'm going to level my canvas so I don't have a lot of runoff. I'm not going to... It's not going to be too wild. It's going to be a fairly thin shot, but I still... And I kind of went with the... Uh, a thalo green. It's a little darker than what I really wanted, but uh, I think it'll be all right. It doesn't really match the green that's on the um, on the tractor itself. It's pretty, a little bit lighter, and it's just hard to get. I, I didn't have a color exactly match it. I added a little white to it. I actually added a little yellow to it. Um, I tried to match it up, but uh, it just wasn't happening. So I'm going to go with this green. As long as it's green and yellow, it doesn't have to match exactly. So, I've never done a green negative space one, so we'll see how that turns out. Of course, this is for a specific audience, not uh, everybody. Tell you what, if they had a if they had a paint color in the store, a tube of paint that said John Deere green, I would buy it so I could do these, but that is not what happens. Unfortunately, so. So we got the green down. It's not too bad. <clears throat> Get these bubbles out. smaller I don't want a real big fan of uh, a big spray so I'm gonna go with my smaller uh, um, little blow dryer That ain't John Deere, John Deere colors. I'm just adding some white to it, just to add some white to it. jar to push the stuff up on it.
else already. Let me move some stuff around so I don't spill stuff. I got some jewelry I made, so I got it sitting on here, which I don't want to mess up. So there we go. I didn't want too much of a fuss. I am going to put some more yellow in it because I do want more yellow. I don't want to cover up the white a little bit. I just want to white in there just for a, a little bit. Now, tractors don't go real fast, so you can't really have a lot of <laughs> a lot of movement, but I think that'll that'll do good. I actually thought about doing a swipe, and I still can, but uh, I think that'll look pretty good. You get the tractor right there. Put, put, put. There it goes. I knew this was going to be a quick one, but it wasn't going to be too much detail, but I wanted to get it done, so... This is gonna be the John Deere one. All right, sorry about the angle on this, but uh, oh well. This is the John, this is the John Deere one that we're finishing up, and uh, I've got the I've got the back taped off, so it's easy to peel off in the morning because it's uh, about. I don't know about 9 30 at night and it'll be ready by the time i before i go to work tomorrow i've got another piece uh just over here that i'm going to resin as well i'm not going to film it but uh i'll do this one first and then we'll get to well i'll do that one um the other one is a clock for a friend of mine that, that i work with and uh he commissioned me to do the piece for him so i got a little extra resin in here Pour on there. Make sure I have enough left over for the clock. It will be a clock. So I'm going to get out all the extra stuff on there. I think I have enough over there so if I I might cut this part out edit it out but uh, when I because I'm gonna have to do some quick stuff on both of these spreading of the resin and getting it ready but if I forget you might have to fast forward this part the part where I go over and spread out the resin on the other piece. Now when 
I'm when I mix these, you do half and half the hardener and the and the. Uh, just take some of this over with me. Make sure I have enough. Oh yeah, I'm thinking I have enough. So I'm on the other one right now, just spreading it around. And uh, we'll see how it goes. It's kind of hard. It's a round clock face, and it's really kind of hard to tape those off. I ended up um, taping it and then. in strips um, and cutting off the excess with scissors, but I still didn't do a great job, but it should be enough to, to get it to, oh, something fell off the table, it's an X-wing, I don't know what that is right there, that is weird. So, but I was wanting to, to uh, let you guys know that in resin, in mixing the resins, of course you do half hardener and half epoxy, and I stir for around three minutes. I set a timer and I try to stick to three minutes, but usually I cut it short by... 30 seconds usually at, at times. Let me get it all down here. I want to make sure I get some resin on there. But it's mostly uh, it's mostly just to make sure that you get it get the get the two mixed together. And I think we do that pretty well. Doing it for the amount of time that we do. But I do it for three minutes. Now, the very first time I resin something, and it wasn't actually a painting, I wasn't, I wasn't resining a painting uh, because I wasn't painting uh, these, these at the time. This was a number of years ago. I actually did a tabletop first, my first resin. And I... I don't even remember how I mixed them and how I stirred it. I probably stirred whatever their directions were. But the one that I do remember, my first big painting I did, which was for our living room, for my wife, she wanted a, a big one and she wanted it resin. And I had never resin anything. And back then I used silicone all the time. And, uh, I didn't research anything. I just thought, didn't think I really needed to. I just resined it. And of course, it, the, re, the silicone separated a lot of spots on, the, on it. And, uh, but anyway, I remember the resin I bought for that. I just bought a little kit at Home Depot or Menards or someplace like that. Ladies. And it was six minutes of stirring of, and it basically, the instruction said to pour in the epoxy or the, well, the hardener one at a time into a cup, mix it for six minutes, pour the hard, the other one in a, a cup by itself, stir it for six minutes and then pour them together and stir it for six minutes. So it, I was like, oh, screw this. I'm not doing, I'm not doing all this resining. Uh, but, uh. I do believe the Pro Marine that I, the instructions with the Pro Marine that I use, it just said pour the two in in equal amounts and stir it for three minutes, just enough to get it stirred together. Make sure it's stirred together, which is what I did. And that's what I stuck to. And if I switch resins, I still do that. I just do three minutes. I don't care what the instructions say. I don't read the instructions. Like this one is a the brand I'm using right now on these pieces is actually a 
a different brand and I, I don't even think it came with instructions, not that I saw. But I am working on this tonight. And today is Mother's Day. And I was able to Spend a little time with my mother. Um, just a little bit about me is um, we built a granny flat off of our off of our garage, a little apartment for my folks, and uh, you know they're getting up there in age, so. Sometimes they're more active than we are, but, uh, you know, go out and do more stuff than we do, but they are getting up in age. They're in there, both in their around middle eighties. And so, but my mom was the one that taught me art. She's an artist herself. Oils has done some great, great, uh, paintings. And uh, she was actually the one that taught me how to oil paint. And I've always been artistic. In my younger days, it was mostly just pencil drawings. I did a lot of drawings. Uh, and uh, comic book characters and, and all that stuff. But uh, I, I did my first oil painting at 10 years old. I didn't really do much after that until I was in high school. Uh, my mom taught a night class at a college uh, for painting, and so I sat in on that, and that's how I learned. And then in my uh, mid mid to late twenties, early thirties, I painted some uh, with her help. I she showed me again, and, and was sat there with me and kind of instructed me on all the all the stuff that I'd forgotten. And so. Um, That's how I learned how to oil paint. And then, when I got to remarried, I wanted to paint my wife a picture and I just asked her for help. So she helped me paint some hit paintings for that and then kind of brought back all that. And then I was old, I did a, a quite a number of oil paintings. Um, and then that's when I found this and that's, I fell in love with this and I don't even oil paint anymore, but anyway. That's a little bit about me. But anyway, oh, what I was going with on that was, so every one, every painting I do, I take over, because it's just, I just have to walk through the garage in my studio slash um, spare bedroom is right by our, right at the back of the house, um, right by the garage door going into the garage. So I just, I, it doesn't take me longer take it over there and I show her each and every one and she loves the colors and all these and she's just kind of blown away about about the style and and what these fluid acrylic uh, paintings how they turn out so I was able to take my latest one which was the uh, 70s Dodge Charger the purple uh, the purple one that I just did and I was able, I had it finished so I took it over there today with my gift to her and stuff so um, and she does have some paintings, but she would, she's always says, I wish I had a big, big house and I could put up all these paintings you do, fill it with your paintings. And I think actually she only has one of mine right now. Um, so, but she wants, she wants them, well, she loves them all and, all right, so I think I've got this pretty well clear. And so I have the tractor here and uh, we're gonna set it right in here. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Move it over just, I think that's about right. So, and it's off just a little bit, but this way 
but I think it'll be all right because um, that's where it ended up. But so, and that one is that one. So that one's good to go. Thanks for watching, and hopefully there's some farmers out there, some tractor lovers that will want this one. And I have an international tractor, which is red. Still yet to do, and I will be getting to that soon. Thanks for watching.